101.1 FM. And we're on the line this morning with Jody Rainey, the principal of the Homer Center Junior Senior High School, who joins us, uh, brought to you by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Todd. It's good to talk to you again as we get set for the end of the academic year, and that means, well, high school graduation is coming up. Different this year than any other year. So let's talk about Homer Center's plans for high school graduation. That's a good starting point, I think. Well, when uh, you and I were emailing, I was kind of all set, Todd. Um, you know, I think that, you know, our plan uh, as it stands right now was to uh, do graduation in our parking lot on Saturday, June uh, 6th, starting at 11 o'clock. And uh, we kind of had a plan worked out where each student would have one car. Um, we were going to use, we have a tiered parking lot up from our track, if people are familiar. Mm -hmm. And we were going to be able to do our student speeches and stuff like that and then present our diplomas on our patio uh, one student at a time, you know, coming up on a car. Mm -hmm. What we, you know, and, and I don't want to get everybody all riled up, but I, you know, I there's speculation that, you know, that on Friday, this Friday, that, you know, it'll be announced that Indiana County will be potentially moving to green. Um, and if that's the case and that occurs, um, we actually will be moving our graduation to our football stadium. And um, we're still considering moving our foot to our football stadium. And that announcement will come out, um, you know, on I'll give the information to our seniors tomorrow uh, on plan one, plan two. Uh, so they can plan accordingly. But right now, um, I said our graduate, one thing I know for certain, our graduation is set for Saturday, June 6th at 11 a.m. Uh, that's the one thing I know for certain. And uh, location will be determined. Right. And and I said, we, we have both plans developed. Um, and, you know, so, you know, a lot of this really will depend on the speculation of what, where Indiana County status lies uh, which, you know, we're hoping, you know, that that announcement will come Friday uh, and the governor's, we, you know, that you know, he usually announces on Friday, then it gives you a week to prep up and ramp up and then you effectively go and that would be June 5th um, if that occurs. And that's a big if. Um, not, you know, I don't have any insider trader information here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just saying that that kind of seems to be the speculation. And Representative Struzzi seemed pretty hopeful of that when we talked to him last hour. Uh, meanwhile, you have to be pretty heartened by the response of the whole community to graduation and to the end of the school year. I mean, they're lighting up the stadium, uh, and at Homer Center there will be other activities uh, to uh, salute the Homer Center class of 2020. Um, this Friday, the lights at Memorial Field, uh, the yep. home of the football team, and First Commonwealth Bank Field where the baseball team plays. They'll be on the lights for 70 minutes to honor the 70 graduating seniors starting at 2020 p.m. That's 8.30. Um, right. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the borough yeah. police, the volunteer fire department, they're going to lead the parade of cars. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, so basically that'll happen um, at, at you know, 820 or, you know, in, in fire company speak or military time, 2020, mm -hmm. obviously in honor of the class of 2020. Uh, they'll pull out of the Homer City. Uh, Homer City Fire Department's been great uh, organizing and coordinating that for us um that end of it and they will do a parade uh, up around the football stadium uh down the first commonwealth field as you says our baseball stadium and um and just to honor you know the class of 2020 um you know and so i think it's a great time for the or an opportunity for the community to you know to you know come out and support the kids and and show them that they're thinking about them and care about them and you know and, and i i got a great card this week todd from uh one of our seniors um, that basically I, I, I retrieved something for, uh, for this student from the school that was theirs mm -hmm. and, and sent me a note thanking me and just said, you know, talked about the experience that uh, the student had at Homer center. And, and at the end said, you know, I don't want, you know, this last quarter of my senior year to overshadow all the great things that have happened um, throughout my time there. And I really, I thought that put it in perspective a lot. You know, we were, you know, we're so worried about everything that these kids missed out on uh, their last quarter of the year, but I don't want it to overshadow all the great things that happened to them uh, in the other previous 11 years. Um, and so, you know, so I think this Saturday or this Friday, I'm sorry, at eight, you know, 2020, 
Um, anybody that is interested in participating, uh, they should, you know, if they want to go down to the fire department and kind of follow the trucks around in the parade and, you know, and just celebrate the kids, uh, I think that's a great opportunity to do that. And again, it'll be this Friday, uh, starting down at the Hummer City Fire Station at, uh, at eight or at eight twenty in the evening. All right. Meanwhile, you are thinking about the end of this academic year and getting set for another year to come. And so let's talk about summer plans. Uh, you'll have students coming back next year, whether it's to the building physically right off the bat or not. And uh, so planning must go on uh, for kids. Uh, I think the last time we talked, we were we were discussing scheduling of classes for students, and that was going pretty well. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, just give us an update on what's happening with uh, students here in what will be the off season, the summer season. Yeah, our well, first off, our instructional we're ending our instructional year Friday um, as far as. Uh, you know, we're going to spend that following week, uh, you know, like we would any other time, closing out, finalizing, you know, grades, report cards, and all that stuff. Um, but we have sent out an email to every one of our, our students, um, 7 through 12, and I know the elementary has done the same, uh, K through 6. Um, but basically what uh, we're doing starting tomorrow is we're bringing um, students up in very, very small groups, to return any of their books, uh, technology that uh, was given to them uh, throughout the closure. Uh, And also for, we have very few kids, but we do still have some that have some personal items here at the school. And so we're going to do that exchange tomorrow, them bringing back stuff, getting their stuff that they have in the building. Um, So that schedule is not only on our Facebook page, that schedule has also been emailed to every student uh, like I said, in the high school grade seven through twelve, uh, the elementary exchange will happen next week. Um, but so, and then so it'll be grades ten, eleven, and twelve tomorrow, uh, and then on Friday grades seven, eight, and nine. Um, so just want to make sure that gets out to how we're going to wrap up the year. Um, for us, uh, scheduling, we got all the schedule requests in. Uh, once we get past June sixth, we'll sit down and we'll start putting together the schedules for the students uh, for next year. And then um, the other thing, Todd, is we're spending the summer, you know, we've, I just finished up a department chair meeting here right before you called. Um, one of the things that we're doing is, um, you know, we're looking at our continuity of ed plan that we use this year. We thought we had a lot of good components to that plan. Mm-hmm. We also think there's a lot of things we need to improve. So we've really put our focus on, um, you know, three things. Uh, we, we know that if we are in this boat next year, as far as distance learning, that we got to keep the things that we did this year that were good, that worked, and we need to improve. So to that end, we've done some surveys of students, teachers, and parents. Uh, we're taking that data, and what we're doing is um, we're going to go through. We know that if we next year, if we're in this boat or any subsequent year, that we need to do a couple of things. Number one, we need to make sure that we maintain the pace and the rigor of our planned instruction. You know, uh, we can't lessen what we do or trim what we do. We need to deliver a full uh, experience in each of our courses. Um, the second thing I think that's important is we do need to come up with a system that maintains integrity to require it, to grade it, to evaluate it, and evaluate it on what kids are able to know or do based on our learning objectives and not what they have or don't have as far as resources in their home. Um, And then the last part of that is then we'll look at, you know, we know there'll still be barriers to that and we need then to attack those barriers that solve those issues for the majority of our students and then individualize on a case-by-case basis for the rest of them. So, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, rotating schedules and kids coming to the buildings different days or, you know, there's, you know, all kinds of different scenarios. The one thing we do know uh, at Homer Center is we have to educate kids. That's going to happen either traditionally or it's going to happen online. And so we feel very good about our traditional program, uh, but we certainly want to increase and and ramp up our efforts as far as if we're in the boat with distance learning in the future. And we also want to incorporate that as part of our normal classroom routine that we use more technology 
Uh, that way, when if we do have to turn the switch, uh, it, it happens pretty quickly. So our summer really is going to be spent focused very hard and strongly on um, just really ramping up our continuity of ed plans and making sure that we provide the training to teachers, students, and parents, and, um, you know, we can deliver that in a much um, more efficient manner than we did this past year. I'm sure that there's going to be an awful lot of study going on on the part of administrators as to how things went and what can be done better. Just a couple of moments left with Jody Rainey, the principal at Homer Center Junior Senior High. Uh, But you also uh, serve with the Heritage Conference, of course, as the president and on District 6 uh, athletic committees. Uh, So, you know, just for a couple of moments, uh, give us an update from those perspectives, because those are things that have to be addressed as well from your perspective. The National Federation sent out some uh, potential guidance um, on things, how they should look. Um, and I know the PIAA is kind of um, gave Dr. Lombardi, the executive director, um, some authority to, you know, make some decisions and recommendations uh, as to what, you know, our athletic programs and, you know, schedules and things like that may look like moving into uh, the future. Um, so right now we're still kind of in a holding pattern, digesting some information that's come out. And as of right now, um, you know, still we're setting on July 1st is, you know, hopefully the opportunity we can bring people back in, um, and start doing some practicing, but that may look a lot different, um, just because of social distancing and, you know, they're talking about requirements of how many people can come for a workout and, and things of that nature. So I think it's kind of like anything else. I mean, you know, a lot of it at this point in my mind is a lot of things that need to be digested. But um, from the heritage standpoint, um, you know, we're just going to take our lead off of PIAA and what's given to us. Um, But also, you know, I always talk about this with heritage. We're also more than our athletics. We're also academics and in the arts. And so, you know, we've we've have some preliminary discussions on how we can you know, provide opportunities for students in all those areas um, and, and still meet the guidelines and, and the requirements that we're going to have to follow. So uh, we're we're in touch with each other, but there hasn't been a lot of action as far as, you know, movement and stuff. I think it's kind of like one of those things we're waiting uh, to get some more specifics and then we'll come together and we'll start making decisions and communicating that out either heritage-wise to our member schools and District 6-wise to our member schools. Things are changing day to day, and so decisions made today might be entirely different tomorrow. Jody Rainey, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us. We will catch up with you at some point next month, I'm sure, and uh, find out how things stand, or you or Superintendent Kurt White. So thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Todd. I'm looking forward to being able to be in the studio with you sometime real soon, too. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm kind of lonely here, too. <laughs> Have a great day. Hey, thanks, Todd. Here we go. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS. Indiana County, WCCS. Indiana County.